Home and to Rory, Michael and Paul to this week's edition of Championship Matters. It's semi-final time in the race for Liam McCarthy. First up is the meeting of Leinster champions Dublin against Jimmy Barry Murphy's Cork. Before we talk about that game, strange that this man is sitting beside me here in the month of August. Michael Finlay, uh, it's been a difficult enough year because obviously you were injured for a lot of it. It must have been difficult for you to be watching from the sidelines. Yeah, personally, Marty, you know, it's been unfortunate this year with injury and I think I missed maybe five games, championship games this year. Um, I played an hour and 40 minutes and then got together a championship, so very disappointing, you know, standing on the sideline, watching lads, you know, trying to overcome a few of the games and, you know, maybe hoping to give them a hand, like, you know, so thankfully they get back for the last game or two, but, you know, it's too late at that stage. Have you met together collectively since losing to Cork? Have you discussed what went wrong? No, no, we haven't, no. We've just been chilling out now the last week and a half and just maybe clearing the heads, I suppose, more than that, Marty. So, um, you know, I think, I think we know ourselves what went wrong, like, on the day. You know, it's simple enough, like, Cork were the better team. You know, we, we've had a few injuries, you know, over the last few weeks and that, but at the end of the day, they were more hungry, hungry on the day, and they're the better team. I noticed as well that Ned Quinn said today that he was hoping that Brian Cody and everybody, all the management team and the players, would be back. Do you think that will happen, that you'll all be back in for 2014? Yeah, you're probably asking the wrong man for, for that question, you know, but um, my fingers crossed, you know, I can't see anyone really leaving. You know, I know the likes of Henry, obviously, he's pushing on in his mid-30s, mid but, you know, look at Tony Brown there for Waterford, he's, he's still hurling well at, at 40 years of age, so I think Henry is still fresh, and I suppose he'll see how, how club goes this year, but fingers crossed he does stay on, and management do stay on as well, because, you know, they've, they've been great the last, you know, number of years, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, things are still going well in Kilkenny, and it's just a small thing, maybe, like, the way we lost the last day. I think he'll all be back in 2014. I have that uh, feeling. But of course, while we empathise or sympathise the fact that Michael is not playing hurling in August, have you ever played hurling in I August with Offaly? Yeah, my heart bleeds for him. I've, I've <laughs> never played. I've never played in August with, with Offaly. So um, I give him a few tips as to what to do in, in August <laughs> if he wants to. Uh, yeah, I suppose it's changed the whole landscape for hurling. Kilkenny are gone so early. Uh, anyone who's left has, feels they have a they have a good chance of, of, of winning. And as long as they're in it, they're going to be favourites. Um, but I think they had, a, they had a difficult year from start, really, to, yeah. to a lot of injuries. You know, the big match last weekend had a lot of talking points. Uh, there was the Sean Kavna tackle, the football game, and obviously Joe Brawley's uh, outburst in, on the Sunday game or the Saturday game live, as it was. It, cynical fouling is part of Gaelic football, and it's very much a topic. But is, is, is cynicism relevant, relevant, prevalent in the game of hurling? Uh, well, I suppose, Marty, the, the game, hurling is kind of... Uh, moved on a bit more maybe than the, the football has kind of gone where teams are defensive orientated where the hurling is kind of you know if you're in on goal in hurling it's a, a clip of a hurley mm. rather than a, a rugby tackle I think uh, often a clip of a hurley is a sword than a rugby tackle but <laughs> if you're not prepared to take uh, you know the punishment you're not going to score a goal so I think you can see this season in particular the lack of goals in hurling people mm. are kind of taking points you know not, I'm not saying handy points but the point count is definitely higher but I think that that's the reason why we're not seeing these kind of controversial moments in the hurling. But go back to the Kilkenny game where Shane O'Neill was, um, I suppose, lucky, mm. to, to call it slightly, um, where he wasn't um, taken aside by Barry Kelly. That was probably the the most cynicism I've seen mm. in hurling the last year or two. But you know, in club games, you know, there's plenty of the lads going in on goal. There is there is plenty of guys who will take the the yellow card. Is there cynicism in hurling? Do you think, Rory? It might not be as obvious um, as in football, and it might not be called cynicism uh, in hurling, but I suppose under the high ball, um, certainly there's, the rules are being bent, and uh, playing the hurl and playing the hand has, has definitely come into it more so in, in the last few years, but it's probably not as obvious as, as in football. OK, plenty more to talk about, and thanks, guys, for the moment. Well, such are the demands placed on inter-county hurlers and footballers nowadays has become more and more of a young man's game. The commitment required is amateur in name, but professional in almost every way. Irish Mirror GA correspondent Pat Nolan reckons that one or two of the demands are a bit too much at times. We're told that inter-county players train and prepare like professionals nowadays, but in some ways they go beyond that. Training five, six or seven days a week, early morning sessions and strict drinking bans. Is there any room in a player's eye to be human anymore? The issue of drinking bans that are applied by many managers for months on end is an interesting one. The 1990s vintage of Offaly hurlers would be stirred, if not a little shaken, by it all. Offaly are the Ireland hurling champions for the third time. Fundamentally, I don't agree with strict drinking bans being imposed on inter-county panels. 
A squad of 30 is a disparate group with different needs. All it takes is for a minority to break rank. Other players will resent it, spirit erodes, and a manager is damned by how he does or doesn't deal with it. It's easier for managers in the top counties who are competing for honours to impose a ban straight up, but it's a harder sell from the middle tier down. And that ability and understanding will definitely help sweeten the mix. Even professional sportsmen aren't expected to adhere to drinking bans from one side. Wayne Rooney can go out for a couple and still play for Manchester United a few days later. The Irish soccer team traditionally go for a few looseners when they arrive in Dublin just a few days before an international match. So, if professional sportsmen aren't expected to adhere to lengthy drinking bans, why should GA players? Interesting there from Pat. In Kilkenny, is there a, a, a drinking ban? No, Marty, there's, there's no explicit, explicit drinking ban at all. I think Brian leaves up to the players what they want to do. Um, you know, I suppose we have the cop on not to be doing it. You know, we're not foolish. And at the end of the day, you're only cutting yourself really because you have to go out and, and perform in these training sessions. And if you're out drinking every weekend, you're going to be seen like you know, your, your performance is not going to be up to scratch and your, your, your position on the team is going to dwindle down you know, into the 20s, 30s and eventually off the panel because like, you know, it is quite serious. And, you know, as I said, you'd be found out on, on, the, on the train session. Mm. Well, drinking obviously is only one commitment that players uh, have to, to forsake. But in terms of you now and being involved with Kilkenny, tell me what your training week is like. Our training week is normally, I suppose we train normally on Wednesday night, Friday night, and uh, maybe a game Sunday or train Sunday. Uh, the gym work is left up to yourself what day you want to do it on. It's normally a Monday, and um, I suppose I was travelling from the University of Limerick this year, so I suppose I was leaving at around four, half four, um, on the Wednesdays and Fridays to go for training. And I suppose I like to get in an hour before training and you know, get a bit of physio and just chill out after an hour and a half drive, I suppose, and loosen up a bit. And uh, then you'd, you'd train for an hour and a half or so, and you'd have a bite to eat after training, and then you'd travel back. So you could be gone there six hours, seven hours, I suppose, you know, from the time you actually leave Limerick and by the time you get back to bed. So, you know, like, to be fair to Kenny, we don't overtrain or overdo it or anything like that, but, mm. you know, there is a nice feel, like, you know, it's not as if you turn up at seven o'clock and you train for an hour and a half and, you, and you're, you're gone straight home. There is a bit of preparation there, and I suppose after the game, then you're recovering in as well for the next day. So, dare I ask, how many hours per week would you spend? Preparing, training for hurling. So mentally, your, your mind is going on stop, Marty. Like you know, especially if you have injuries, you're you're getting in that bit of work on days you have off, and that you're trying to just get back up, full health and up to full scratch. But um, just offhand, it could be 25 hours, maybe. Like you know, especially with travelling. Like you know, if you're not travelling, that would reduce. But the jobs these days, you know, a lot of lads are in Dublin these days, driving and they're they've, they've, they're maybe covering Leinster with sales jobs. You know, so a lot of, a lot of players are travelling, and a lot of companies are very good to the lads. To be fair, and they can work around their schedules, around train sessions, but. You could be talking 20-something hours easily a week. Intimidating figure, 25 hours. Was it different in your day when you started in 1993? Oh, 1993. I remember, well, back then, Marty, the league was a couple of games before Christmas, a mm. couple of games after Christmas, and usually we were kind of fighting relegation before Christmas. <laughs> and uh, so you'd always have a few points, I suppose, after. Well, I was only, I suppose, just out of minor, but, you know, the, the culture was um, you'd have a few drinks after each league game on a Sunday. And, I suppose I remember then training, you know, like the facilities nowadays with the, the 3G and the new slitters and mm. the structures training. But I remember we used to train with one floodlight in Dungar one, one floodlight in Dungarvan. And you'd have your physical and your stick work and your drills. And a lot of us used to dress in black. So we would hide up the top of the... Uh, <laughs> and we wouldn't be noticed if they, were, if they went for a few laps at the pitch. But, you know, the commitment is obviously different. Like, but that moved on. Um, I don't think that plan would work in Kilkenny. No, really not anymore, no. No, so I think, no, I think <laughs> Brian Cody yeah. would, would say something about See, it. See, Waterford used to break up the league panel and have a month break before the championship panel right. could be drawn. So that month of April would be lost as well. Right. right. So we were behind the eight ball most of the time, but it was only then, I suppose, when Gerald McCarthy came in and training became structured and, and mm. the likes of the drinking bands and the, yes. the diets and all that. So that was, what, 97? Yeah, it would have been. So that's kind of when, it, um, I suppose, Gerlach Nan and the Clare team of 95 would have changed everyone's attitude towards fitness. Yeah. And uh, the commitment nowadays is just phenomenal, and you know the work that the lads are putting in. You know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. When you, when you look at the teams in the left in the All Ireland semi final, you look at Cork, but particularly Clare, Limerick, Dublin, they're all very young. Is it a young man's game now? Well, there's no question. Like Tom Kenny is the only man in the All Ireland semi final series with an All Ireland medal. Mm. Um, I don't know if there's anyone over 30 playing in, in, in any game. I think game. Brian Murphy and on, um, Carl Lockton have, but I know what yeah, you mean. Yeah. On the starting on, on 15. The starting, on, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the Fitzgibbon has become the breeding ground now for the all -Ireland, for the inter-county teams. They mm. go through Fitzgibbon, they're fit. National League then is very young. You have more experienced players maybe taking the game out in the National League or looking for the break. 
for the latter stages of the league. So, like, I mean, the average age, I would think now, is somewhere between 23, 24, 25. Mm. And, like, the, the speed of the game, even the last three years, is, is, is even after coming up another notch. Another notch, yeah. Rory, you're based between Dublin and Offaly. I know you work here in town as, as a barrister, and you're in your 30s. How does that... How does trying to be an intercounty hurler affect your lifestyle, considering the, the work you do? Yeah, I, I suppose there's an element of you just getting used to it. Um, when I was, I was in college in Galway and we travelled from Galway together with my brother and when I went to Dublin it just continued on and it really does become part of your week and you don't think about it. Uh, it's maybe only as you come towards the end you begin to realise how much time you're, you're spending at, at it and when people keep reminding you how much time you're, you're spending at it. Um, but it's certainly, I, I guess it depends on the type of work you're doing, whether you can fit, fit it in around um, the, the game. But, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more difficult, that's for sure. And I think the days of players playing too far beyond 30 are, are, mm. are looking uh, like they're, they're, they're on the way out, I think. But you're not going to announce your retirement here in Championship Matters, no, eh? Certainly not. No. <laughs> <laughs> but when the, the man here between us has won his All-Ireland medals, but you've given so much time to Offaly. And yet, with no real tangible award, does that frustrate you? And I does. I mean, you? some people would say it's it's uh, the definition of madness, maybe. But I mean, you, you keep going, uh, hoping that the day will come. And um, I mean, we've I suppose the reality is we've come up against possibly the best team that has ever played the game during my time. Um, and awfully we were in an All Ireland final the year before I started, and my arrival heralded new new lows first. But you know, at the end of the day, we enjoy it. And enjoy going training and, and the, the competitive side of it, so you'll keep going. Absolutely. More to come, of course, about hurling. But now it's hot seat quiz time. Mayo midfielder Aidan O'Shea didn't perform too well last week in the hot seat, but put in a man of the match performance in Croke Park on Sunday. Cork hurler Cahal Nocton will be hoping that the quiz experience will bring him and his county similar good fortune on Sunday. <laughs> I'll have to represent hurlers over the footballers and hopefully get one or two more than Aidan Walsh. I think he got five or six, so God, hopefully try to get one or two more than that anyway, so uh, he won't be able to give us any stick. And uh, might win an old prize here with the quiz, an old holiday or something like that would be nice. Any chance of an old holiday there, Marty, if I top the leaderboard with this, no? Uh, I'll think about it. We'll see. Now, are you ready? Lash away, Marty. OK, let's have a go. In what year did Tipperary's Lark Corbett win his first All-Star? Uh, 2001? No, 2009. 2009. Oh. Which Munster County won three All-Ireland Under-21 hurling titles in a row between 2000 and 2002? Limerick. When did Cork last win the minor hurling All-Ireland title? 2001. Who captained Monaghan to this year's Ulster football title? Oh, Lennon. Park Chalchon is which county's home ground? Uh, Mead. Which Cork hurler won five All-Stars in a row between 1983 and 87? John, John Finton. In 2013, Tipperary were knocked out of the championship at the earliest stage since which year? 99. Who scored Dublin's goal in the Leinster hurling semi-final replay with Kilkenny? Uh, Paul Rain. Close, it was Danny Sutcliffe. Yeah. Should have got that actually. Yeah. yeah, you should have. How many senior All Ireland football titles have Cork won? Football. Yes. About 20. Not close at all, Cahal. It's seven. It's more of it off there. Who reached the Leinster Minor hurling final this year for the first time since 1991? Dublin. No, Dublin. Wexford. Stop, stop. It was Leash. Oh, bad guess. Bad guess indeed. Cahal Nocton, you got six. Six. Is there a holiday for that now? Absolutely not. Any praise? You don't deserve a prize for that. You were going so well. I hope you do a lot better on Sunday. You're finished. Now get out of here. So off he goes. He lies joined fifth overall. Dick Clerken and Brian Carroll still lead. <laughs> Solid, Cahill, and well done. You'd be very handy in a table quiz up around Newtown Chandra. Right, so lads, down to serious business. It's Cork against Dublin, first of the All-Ireland Hurling semi-finals. Let me put it to you, Paul about the five-week layoff. Would it be of concern to you, considering that in 2000, in, in 02, you won your first Munster title and you had, to, you had a bit of a wait before you got to Cork Park? If That's I right, Marty. We had seven weeks. Seven? Uh, seven, yeah. Um, and a lot of other things kind of stacked against us. It was our first provincial win in 39 years, so the cup mm. was kind of paraded around the county in the cool camps and the summer camps and clubs and mm. clubs and pubs, if you want, um, for a while. It was a kind of a celebrated like an All-Ireland win. And then I think um, the qualifying kind of series, there was a couple of draws and we didn't know who we were playing till the week before. 
and Wexford had put Kilkenny into the back door as well that year. <laughs> um, Michael Jacobs, great goal in the last oh, minute yes, at the yes. Leinster semi-final. So at least Dublin know that they had Cork two, in two weeks. They can yes. prepare, say, ma match-ups and kind of their game plans and whatever, whereas we were kind of like five days, six days before the match wonder and, and on, on that occasion Clare looked very leggy against, against Kilkenny and we thought, you know, maybe that we were a bit complacent that we thought we'd take Clare. But Cork, on the other hand, will come in having played games the whole way up, you know, good games as well, um, having, you know, taken out Kilkenny, like they'll be full of confidence. So the first 20 minutes of that game will be vital for Dublin. You know, they'll, they'll be wondering, is their form as good as it was in the Leinster final? They'll be wondering how good were Galway in the Leinster final, mm. con considering Galway are gone out of the championship. So a lot of questions are there for Dublin. But it's really, it, it, it comes down to, like, if the players are fresh mm. and ready for it. If, if they haven't been waiting around, you know, too long, like mm. five weeks, they probably played a club game or two, a couple of challenge matches and that. But, you know, it's such, it's such a new adventure for Dublin yeah. that I think they won't be caught with dry off the ball. Lots of experience waiting five weeks in Kilkenny. So what would be the Kilkenny way of doing things? Well, normally, Marty, would have a, a club game, if not two, you know, in that period of time. I suppose the week leading up to the game then is, is a week of freshness and it's only a bit of ball work and that. So, you know, you're just getting your mind ready for that week. So you, can only, you might only have two weeks, maybe, of training with Kilkenny around that period of time. And it's a matter of actually the attitude of the players, as Paul was saying, like, you know, getting down to work at that stage and how much work you actually put in because the last thing you want now is, is head into last week or so saying, God, we have actually done much and the intensity wasn't there. So um, I presume like Anthony Daly obviously knows the stuff like, and he's been around the blocks, you know, a long time now so I've no doubt these boys are training away hard and they're, they're training with high intensity and that's what they need to do coming into this game. Rory were you impressed with Dublin was, th was this a difficult Leinster championship for them to win? Yeah I'm sure it was I, I think the critical thing for Dublin was last year they, they, they got the kick in the backside you know and, and that's very much fresh in their mind and I'd say has helped keep them very focused uh, this year and it's the, probably the principal reason why I don't think they're going to slip up or just not turn up on any given day they're certainly going to turn up with a performance whether it's it's good enough is, is is another question but i mean this team has been coming they've been more and more competitive every year and uh, i think it's it's no great surprise that they've gone as far as they have paul what about this match in terms of the pairings uh, where do you see the key battle between cork and dublin well or if you've seen dublin over the last couple of games the amount of possession or half back line have repelled and even won directly um, it's a huge advantage to them. You know, placing Liam Rush at centre back has been a master stroke. Um, you know, not I've seen him there a couple of times, two years ago under 21, when they uh, won the Leicester Championship. But he's just the strength of the lad. At, you know, and he, he seems to be not alone playing centre back, but but playing you know deep and kind of on the wings. And he's finding a player with with a with any delivery. He's not just you know turning and off his right or left long. Like he's creating you know nearly attacks for Dublin, and, and it's been a huge plus. And he's. He seems to be such a presence there that any kind of mishit clearance from, from the opposition, he's, he's mopping up. But, you know, the question is, will Cork allow, you know, will they go with Pat Cronin centre-forward or will they go with a smaller man to try kind of drag him out mm -hmm. and create the space behind him? But, you know, for Dublin, you know, so far this year, he's been fantastic. Now, certainly, Jimmy Barry Murphy had planned how to beat Kilkenny and I, it was an interesting tussle at midfield. Are, uh, would you say the Cork midfield is underrated? Are they stronger than what you even thought they were going to be? No, they're two young boys, you know, they're, they're two flyers and they're, they're well able to get up and down the field, so they're Marty. And um, that's actually the area where I think actually is going to be a, a key battle, you know, because you have... Um, you have for Dublin, you have McCaffrey and Boland there in midfield. They've been very, very strong throughout the year so far. The two phys physical men and well able again to get up and down the field. So I think that battle there is going to be huge. Um, and the, the, the delivery of the ball into the forwards on both sides, you know, like Dublin like the kind of ball to the corners and, and sharp ball. And as well, Cork like that as well, you know, for likes of Farrell and these lads getting onto it. So uh, I think the battle there is going to be huge. Who wins it? Especially the half back line as well, I suppose, on either side is going to be key. But midfield should be an interesting one. And the two Cork boys are, are well able to hurl, and you know, it should be an interesting tussle. Are Cork over reliant on Pat Horgan, do you think, Paul? At the minute, I think they are, Marty. Like, I mean, he scored 11 points the last day out of 19, um, seven from freeze. So, mm -hmm. like, I mean, if you look at Cork's record so far this year, they haven't really rattled the net that much, in fact, at all. No. Um, you know, the 14 points in the Munster final was a poor enough showing. Um, you know, when they defeated Clare, it was, uh, you know, a mountain of points again, but they, did, they didn't really get in to create goal opportunities. And, you know, they have plenty of players mm -hmm. like that. They have good forwards, Conor Lahan, obviously Jamie Cole and, and uh, Luke O'Farrell in the corner. That they are, they're, they're getting on the breaks, but they seem to be content to take the points 
um, OK, they're not being fouled either, but unless they're prepared to kind of get in behind the full back line of, of the other teams and take a goal, I, do, I, I, no, I, f I see it hard for them so, to... So you're saying really, Paul, that Cork need to be more clinical, that they actually do need to score a goal against Dublin? Well, Dublin, Dublin scored 225 in the Leinster final, you know, scored 117 twice against Wexford and, and, and you know, 120 against Kilkenny. So I think from that point of view, you know, Cork will find it hard to outscore Dublin if they don't take their chances. They're kind of, they're anticipating the breaks well, but they seem to be content and just tapping over the points. Again, like, I mean, the direct ball sometimes is an issue as well. Sometimes the corner forwards, one goes behind, one goes in front. But they're getting into positions. You can see here, Luca Farrell, again, takes it up, goes in. But again, he comes, always comes back out and takes a shot. So I think Cork will definitely need to kind of take, take the punishment and get in behind the full back line. And, and they will need, I think, two goals to, uh, to upset Dublin. Well, is Croke Park a factor in the sense that a lot of these Cork players haven't played in Croke Park? I don't know. I think Croke Park is something that you, if you haven't played there before, it's something you notice when you go out first. Mm. It, you know, it's obviously a lot different than anywhere else you're, you're playing. But I think particularly at All-Ireland semi-final stage, once the match gets underway, really all you see is the guy you're on and you, you quickly forget the, the surroundings. So I, I don't think it will play a huge factor at, at this stage. Um, and I, I appreciate Cork, some of the lads haven't played there before, but they've played in big games and, and that's really what it's about uh, on Sunday. Michael, you know Cork and you know Dublin rather well at this yeah. stage. Who do you think has the edge? Um, it's going to be Dublin, Marty. You know, I think they're, they're a physical team and they're a fast team and they've had a good run um, into the semi-final. Um, you know, I've you know, seen, seen both games you know, down Port Leash and I was impressed with their game, with their intensity and with their work rate and the way they were able to get the ball into the forwards nice and low. And, you know, they're, they're unstoppable there once a couple of stages because the players run off, um, off, off the man with the ball every time. So, you know, they're, um, they're, they're, just, they're just actually in great shape at the moment. They have great confidence at the moment as well. So I reckon Dublin could have the edge, but, you know, you know Cork, Jimmy Barry Murphy, you know, old head there, and they're going to put up a great battle. And, you know, it's a flick of a kind with these semi finals at the moment, Marty. Like, you know, it has been that way for even in the quarter final stage. It's a flick of a kind between any team. Favourites don't come into it. It's on a day at this stage. And actually, Nash has conceded no goals as well, and that's a factor, I'm sure. Yeah, Nash is flying. You know, I went to Nash, oh, actually with Nash in college down to CIT, and I'm delighted to see him getting his game. He's, he's, he's a, an all star last year, and he's had a great performance so far. So he, he's a great shot stopper. But um, you know, Dublin have the forwards, and maybe to test him the weekend, and you know, it sh should be an interesting one. Okay, Mike Finley is going for Dublin. In a word, Rory, Dublin or Cork? I go Cork. Cork. Okay, so Paul Flynn, you have the casting vote. I'll Cork go or Dublin? I'll go with Cork. So Cork are going to get through to the All-Ireland Final, according to our Championship Matters uh, panel. Almost time to go, but before we do, we have another great competition to take.